Hey everybody, welcome to Divine Thursday for January 7th, 2021. I am your host, DM Galavond. So Fred the Fighter, Rachel the Rogue, Wally the Wizard, Connie the Cleric, had gotten done with all of the New Year celebrations. And they were back on the road adventuring. And they were being sent to take on the lair of this vampire. So they had all the stuff that they thought they would need. And when they got ready to go into the crypt, uh, kind of the cleric pulled Fred the fighter aside and said, Fred, here. And she cast a spell. Boom. And she cast Holy Weapon on his longsword. So that meant that now Fred's weapon would be extra effective when going into the place where the very coffin of the vampire they sought was kept. That is what we are looking at today. We're looking at Holy Weapon, and we're going to see how this has uh, morphed and changed and updated uh, throughout the history of D&D. And, uh, yeah, so let's go ahead and have a look at that now. Um, all right, Holy Weapon first came into D&D, uh, actually in 3rd edition. Um, hasn't been around that long. And it did not come in as Holy Weapon. It came in as Holy Sword. And at that point in time, it was only for uh, Paladins. And, um, yeah, only for Paladins. Uh, they were the only cl uh, class that uh, got to cast it. And it um, is a touch spell, uh, level 4. Um, melee weapon, and it lasts one round per level. Allows you to channel holy power into your sword or any other melee weapon you choose. The weapon acts as a plus five holy weapon. Um, an enhancement bonus on attack and damage rolls. Extra 2d6 damage against evil opponents. Also emits a magic circle against evil effect as the, uh, as the spell. Magic circle ends, the, horde, the sword creates a new one on your turn as a free action. And um, the spell is automatically canceled one round after the weapon leaves your hand. You can't have more than one holy sword at a time. Uh, and if the spell is cast on a magic weapon and powers of the spell supersede any of the weapon normally has, rendering the normal enhancement bonus and powers of the weapon inoperative for the duration. So in other words, you cannot cast Holy Sword on a plus two weapon and instead of a plus five bonus, gain a plus seven bonus. It just is simply going to be the plus, the plus five bonus and the other things. And it probably is also going to suppress other things. Like if you have a, like a Vorpal Sword or something and you cast this on, it's going to lose that Vorpal quality. So... That would be what that means. All right, so that's third edition. Wasn't in before, and it wasn't in fourth edition. So let's now come to fifth edition and see what what we have. Now in fifth edition, we actually have a level five spell called Holy Weapon, which is a concentration spell. And the concentration is up to one hour. It's a bonus action, touch, uh, you imbue a weapon you touch with holy power until the spell ends. The weapon emits bright light in a 30-foot radius and dim light in an additional 30 feet. In addition, a weapon, weapon attacks made with it deal an extra 2d8 radiant damage on a hit. If the weapon isn't already a magic weapon, it becomes one for the duration. So as bonus action on your turn... You can dismiss this spell and cause the weapon to emit a burst of radiance. 
Each creature of your choice you can see within 30 feet of the weapon must make a constitution saving throw. On a failed save, the creature takes 48 radiant damage and is blinded for a minute. On a successful save, creature takes half as much damage and isn't blinded. End of each of its turns, blinded creature can take can make a constitution saving throw and then the effect on itself on a success. So, uh, that's why this holy weapon is really effective against things like undead. Because uh, a lot of undead are vulnerable to radiant. So, uh, effectively you're doubling whatever that 48 score is. And even if they make their save, you're still effectively giving them, you know, 2d8 damage doubled. Which, you know, depending on your rolls, could be, could be as good as or better than an average 4d8 roll. Um... Uh, so that is uh, uh, that's basically what uh, what is going on there. All right, and that is holy weapon. And for fifth edition, by the way, that comes out of Xanathar's Guide to Everything. So it's been a, been around for a little bit, but it wasn't it wasn't in the initial release of the rules. Okay, if you like everything we're doing, please subscribe to the channel, like and share the videos, click the post notification bell so that you too can be notified every time new content drops. Please look at the description, find all the ways to follow us on social media, and check out all of the weekly actual play content we do, and find out information about how you can um, support us through the Patreon that we have. Thank you, everybody, for stopping by today. I hope you have a uh, hope you roll a lot of great dice during the coming week, and we will see you later. Good night.